New symbol appearing on Russian military equipment. A new tactical symbol appearing on Russian tanks and armored vehicles involved in the ongoing offensive near Kharkiv, Ukraine, suggests a significant scale up in Russia's military activities, according to the open source intelligence monitor OSINT Defender. According to Newsweek, the previously unseen symbol consists of a central square with two overlapping diagonal crosses. This marking has started to appear on Russian equipment over the last several days. OSINT Defender reports that the new symbol could be related to Russia's renewed border offensive in northeast Ukraine. Russian armored assault groups are attempting to breach Ukrainian defenses, particularly around Vovchansk, where Russian forces have been spotted entering the border town. In conflict zones, symbols like this primarily serve as identification friend or foe measures a way to prevent friendly fire. The most prominent marking has been the Z that appeared on many Russian armored vehicles early after the invasion in 2022 and went on to become something of a symbol for Russians to show support for the war effort. Markings are crucial in combat to distinguish between friendly and enemy vehicles, especially in conflicts like the one in Ukraine where both sides might use similar equipment, said Michael Purcell, a retired US Marine Lieutenant Colonel who now teaches at George Washington University. The Russian military introduced district symbols on its armored vehicles shortly before the 2022 invasion. According to Russo-Ukrainian War Spotting, a database website of the conflict run by volunteers, each Russian military district, along with Russia-aligned militia in Donbass, has been assigned distinct signs. The website has tracked more than 10 different symbols used by the Russian army on the battlefield, including the white Z. There have been cases where some Russian vehicles bore signs of districts they don't belong to. Adaptations to markings may be made to improve clarity and effectiveness, including considerations for drone visibility. But in this case, it seems that the implementation has never been particularly meticulous, Purcell told Newsweek. Space technology can help Ukraine defeat Russia. Elon Musk's friend revealed secrets. Achieving victory in modern warfare will be determined by a nation's supremacy in space. According to American aerospace engineer, writer and founder of The Mars Society, Robert Zubrin, space technologies play a pivotal role in conducting many military operations on the ground. Space technologies are already assisting Ukraine in warfare. Russia has the advantage of numbers, but Ukraine retaliates by extensively utilizing powerful tools of space communication, reconnaissance and GPS-guided munitions. In this sense, it's the first space war. Although space assets have been utilized in warfare since Vietnam, this is the first war where they play a decisive role, Zubrin said. He also added that the space technologies used by Ukraine are provided by the United States. However, a significant issue lies in the uncertainty of future support. The fact that Ukraine can stand up against Russia, which is three times its size, by leveraging its advantage in space demonstrates that in any future war between equal nations, the side with space superiority will prevail. The engineer emphasized, I believe that after victory, Ukraine will become a major power. Great nations achieve great feats. Victory will be the first great feat, followed by others both on Earth and in space, Zubrin said. He added that Ukrainians can already participate in missions with NASA and the European Space Agency. Furthermore, Ukrainian entrepreneurs can establish space companies to compete in the global space business arena. The aerospace engineer also highlighted the case of Serhiy Yakimov, a Ukrainian who leads the American scientific research station Mars Desert in Utah, where people from around the world come to practice Martian missions. The leader of Hezbollah promised to send another 1 to 5 million refugees to Europe. Hezbollah leader Nasrallah promised that if the West does not lift the sanctions imposed on Syria, another 1 to 5 million Syrian refugees who are currently in Lebanon will go to the European Union. If another 1 to 5 million refugees from the Middle East are sent to EU countries, Europe will inevitably face a massive migration crisis already worsened by the armed conflict in Ukraine. Nasrallah considered that the solution to the Syrian refugee crisis involves lifting the international sanctions that weigh on Damascus, which would allow the impoverished and war-torn nation to recover from its situation in a matter of years. Although after 13 years of war, the battlefronts are practically frozen in Syria, many non-governmental organizations and members of the international community consider that the return of refugees is not safe, due in part 
to the reprisals that the Damascus regime may exercise against those who left the country. Many countries and blocs, including the EU, do not maintain relations with the government of Syria. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, as a prominent ally of Hezbollah, which the United States and Brussels classify as a terrorist movement. In the same speech, Hassan Nasrallah raised the possibility of the Israeli population returning to the northern cities of their country along the border with Lebanon if Tel Aviv's military offensive in the Gaza Strip against the Palestinian group Hamas, its ally, ceases. Tell Israeli government to stop the aggression against Gaza if you want to return to the north, said Nasrallah, referring to the almost daily exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah on the border with Lebanon since the beginning of the war in the Palestinian territory on October the 7th. The Hezbollah leader stated that the Americans informed Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that there is no solution in the north without a ceasefire in Gaza. At a strategic level, he believes that Israel is at a dead end, in which it must decide whether to accept a ceasefire and thus recognize its defeat or continue with the offensive and follow into the abyss. Nasrallah also emphasized that the start of a war against Iran would mean that the entire Middle Eastern region would be drawn into an armed conflict. Earlier, Nasrallah called the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus a direct attack on Iran and its sovereignty.